Unit 3, Consumer Rights and Responsibilities in Healthcare. So the objectives for this unit, so spell and define the terms, so making sure you know the terms at the beginning of each unit, explain the purpose of healthcare consumer rights, and then describe the four items common to residents' rights, patients' bill of rights, and clients' rights in home care. And we'll talk about all of these. So consumer rights, so there are three documents that refer to healthcare consumer rights. So in page 27 to 30 in your text, it has actual full copies of all three of these documents. So the resident's rights refers to the environment in which the consumer is being treated. So resident meaning long-term care, patient's bill of rights meaning in an acute care setting, and client's rights uh, in the community or in the home. So consumer rights, so facilities are required to have the Bill of Rights translated into languages common in the community. So if a long-term care facility is in a predominantly Spanish-speaking community, they need to make sure that they have the Bill of Rights translated into that language. Uh, if the patient cannot understand the information due to a mental condition, the Bill of Rights is given to a family. So if a, fam or if a patient has end-stage Alzheimer's, the family is going to be given the Bill of Rights to make sure that these um, rights are followed for their patient. So the staff is expected to be familiar with and protect each patient's rights. So again, there's copies of these in your text, page 27 to 30, and these should be available to you in your workplace as well. So an example is at Colorado Lutheran Home, the residents' rights are actually, uh, their pictures and they're placed up uh, by the fountain room as you walk up the ramp. So you have access to always making sure that you're ensuring these rights with your practice. So all healthcare workers should be familiar with the document that pertains to the facility where they work. So again, if you work in a long-term care facility, you should be familiar with the resident's bill of rights. If you're working in the home, you should be con um, familiar with the client's bill of rights. So supporting rights of healthcare consumers contributes to more effective care. So it's really just important that these rights are followed because ultimately our goal is patient-centered care, and this is going to provide the most effective care. So these documents are really similar. As you look through in your text and you see them, they are almost exactly the same, except for they really differ based on the environment. So um, again, resident and long-term care. So there are some differences in terms of care and consumers' rights related to the environment in which they're served. But for the most part, the, the same um, rights are throughout each of the three documents. So the, the healthcare consumers have a right to be treated in a respectful, dignified manner have benefit of open and honest communication with caregivers and this is really important to be able to ha have that open communication so the most effective care is given and then they have a role in decision making for treatment choices and planning of care so again you know we always assume we're the experts in healthcare and we can make whatever decisions we want but ultimately the patient is the person that's able to make that final decision for treatment choices and a great example of this is chemotherapy if someone's diagnosed with cancer and they choose not to follow through with chemotherapy or radiation or whatever the treatment choice is that is ultimately up to them. So healthcare consumers have the right to be advised about of rights about advanced directives. So one example here is sort of five wishes. That's one um, uh, information source, but the documents that give instructions about consumers' wishes for treatment if the consumer, consumer is unable to communicate. So again, this is really important that the person who has outlined their plan of care if they reach a point in their disease process where they're unable to, to do that for themselves. So the healthcare consumers also have the right to receive continuity of care. So again, in, you know, for example, in the hospital, 12-hour shifts, as the 12-hour shifts up, their shift report, and that care is transferred to another shift, another set of nurses and nurse aides. And it's just important that there's always continuity of care, that no matter who's caring for these consumers, that they have um, really effective care throughout the whole process. So again, 24-7 service, but it's going to be provided by different members of the healthcare team. And then also be informed of resources available for resolving conflicts or grievances. So really, you know, so an example is in long-term care, the ombudsman program, and being able to know how you file a grievance and how you're going to go about that process, d depending on which facility you're working in. So there's also, with rights, there's also responsibilities of healthcare consumers. So the responsibilities are as important as the rights. So it's really important to maintain personal health care records. And all of you probably understand how hard this is sometimes when you were trying to track down your immunization records for this class. So making sure that you have, you know, 
your healthcare records in some format or another, and that you're able to really communicate your past history of you know health and wellness and illness to your provider. So communicating openly with physicians and other caregivers. So again, being open about what will work for you in terms of treatment and what won't work for you in terms of treatment and care. And then providing information regarding past hospitalizations and medications. So being really open about what medications you may be on. And this is important as well with you know even herbal or alternative uh, supplements. So just making sure there are a lot of contraindications between things. So making sure you're very open and honest about what you're taking and your previous um, hospitalizations. So informing physicians and other caregivers if problems are anticipated with following prescribed treatments. So this is really important. So, you know, we have Mrs. Jones, she's diabetic, she's sent home on insulin, and she's terrified of needles and giving herself injections. She needs to make sure that she informs her physician that that's going to be an issue, so a plan of care can be developed. So can a family member give those injections? Can she have a home health nurse come and give those injections? But making sure that, they, that you can follow through with prescribed treatments. And then also accepting responsibility for learning how to manage your own health. So really most of your health and wellness is done outside of a health care facility. So accepting that responsibility for diet, exercise, and all the things you can do, low risk activities to keep yourself healthy. So also asking for clarification if you do not fully understand instructions or explanations. So this is really important. You know, oftentimes uh, uh, consumers are getting an awful diagnosis. They've been, just been told they have cancer. So most of the things the physician says after that are just not really understood. So making sure that the next time they see that physician that they're going to ask for clarification, more information, instructions, and explanations. It's, you know, Another time is really during discharge. If they're given explanations on education and how to better take care of themselves, that if there's any questions that they have, they always seek clarification. And then living a healthy lifestyle and avoiding unnecessary risks of illness or injury, so just taking that personal responsibility to live a health, healthy lifestyle, um, promoting wellness, and then ultimately accepting financial responsibility for payment of health care and providing information for insurance claims. So ultimately we have a cost-driven system, so financial responsibility will be um, is important because that's how the system is run. So the consumer needs to take financial resp responsibility and pass along whatever information they need to to the healthcare team or the billing office.